My guest today is Walt Richer. Walt, how you doing? I'm good. How are you today? I'm doing really well. Tell me, what do you do? What do I do as far as work? For a living, yeah. Yeah, I work at uh, LinkedIn uh, LinkedIn Learning, which okay. is the video training department, or the part of LinkedIn. It used to be Lynda.com. Lynda.com was very famous. They were for 20 21. years. 20 years so they were around and built a huge following, and LinkedIn looked at us and said, this looks like a really premium training company, so they bought us. and. Uh, it's been good for us. Yeah, and then somebody else came around, along and bought LinkedIn, didn't they? There's rumors that Microsoft bought us, yes. <laughs> it's not rumors, it happened. You came, were you part of the original lynda.com? I was a contract author there. Uh, we call it authors or instructors, that's the new term for us, but I was a contract author for about five years. And then right about the time uh, the acquisition, they had an opening for what's called the staff instructor, mm -hmm. and so that was perfect for my skills, so I joined the company at that time. Nice. Tell me, let's talk about LinkedIn Learning, because I'm a customer. I use it. I used it back in the day when it was lynda.com. What's, what's so, have, so when you say you use it, do you actually go through the LinkedIn at linkedin.com website? I do, actually. Just as an employee, I get a free subscription, so it's kind of nice. Right, there's a little link up there in the corner, and you can just instant access to the training from there. Right. Uh, what is the purpose of LinkedIn? What's what's your mission? What's the company? Well, the, mission? the company mission is to uh, the the company mission is to train do uh, training for any professional uh, job skill is what it is. So in LinkedIn, the nice thing about being part of LinkedIn is they have what they call their economic graph, which is a way of saying all this metadata that we have about jobs and uh, employees and companies mm -hmm. and skills that you need to have those jobs because we have this gigantic database of uh, people that are in the professional world. We know a lot about uh, the skills that you need for certain jobs and what skills, like if you and I are in the same job mm -hmm. description, um, uh, and there's another, say, 4,000 or 5,000 people have that same job, they can analyze that and say, David, you need, you're missing these two skills that might be, you should look into new courses in this area, and I might have a different set of skills that I could need to fulfill my, you know, the best possible, uh, be the best possible my job. Okay. That's what I'm trying to say. So the, LinkedIn already has that information, so when they bought LinkedIn Learning, they bought us because we knew how to do the training. We did high quality training. Um, now we can mesh that with their economic graph and they build, basically can feed that into us so mm -hmm. we can do a better job at figuring out what courses to create over the next six to 12 months. That's okay. one really good thing we can do. But the other thing is, like I said, we can uh, figure out what, what you might be interested in and then serve that up to you in your feed. Yeah, that is actually pretty nice because if you try to just browse through the courses at LinkedIn Learning, it's it's kind of overwhelming. Yeah, at this point, we have over fourteen thousand courses. Fourteen. So. so you have the problem. <laughs> sometimes the problem is finding relevant content, but in this case, the tr problem is filtering the content right. down to what's it's relevant. Filtering, and, and sometimes you don't even know what you need. I mean, you mm -hmm. obviously you know I'm a web developer, and I'm going to need to maybe I want to learn ASP.NET Core. Uh, but there's a lot of other things around your job right. that you may not realize you need, and that's the kind of the hidden nuggets that we can pull out. Like, did you know what about VS Code? So you're a you're a visual. I'm sorry, you're an ASP.NET developer. You're going to be core. Well, maybe you should take some courses on ASP.NET Core, and maybe some courses on how the GitHub integration works. Mm -hmm. um, and you might think you know that already, but maybe not in the tooling that that you're currently you're, you're switching over to, right? Is most of the training around technical skills and no, computer we, skills? No, we have three main areas, tech, creative, and business. So Linda was known for their creative library. That was what made them famous. And so th th things like Adobe Photoshop, we had a huge following, lots of well-known authors in that field. And then we also had a big presence in art, design, music, and then they later, in later years, they branched out into business topics like management, you know, see, uh, executive suite level kind of training. Um, and then about five years ago, more than that, eight years ago now, they started looking at the tech world and figuring mm -hmm. out where, where we need to have courses. And that's when I came on board. Uh, the oh. first course I did for lynda.com was um, 
I got called uh, by what we call content managers. Mm -hmm. uh, their, their job is to find instructors that can teach the content. Okay. And he called me and said, I've heard that you're a WPF uh, expert. And I was at the time. And say so I'm interested in maybe having you do a WPF course. Well, we end, I ended up doing a Silverlight course instead because that was newer and, and you figured it would last long. Hotter, hotter <laughs> topic. Figured it would be more popular. Uh, so I did that. But you know, over the years, my, my like you, your skills change over of the course. years. And so I, I did a. If you want to talk about what some of the courses I've done. Sure. Okay. Tell me a couple. Well, I did. You've done a lot. So, so I, yeah, so I did WPF. I did, I did do just some WPF eventually, and I did XAML, and I did uh, an Xbox, a couple of Xbox courses. That was fun. Building Xbox games? Uh, building Xbox apps, as opposed okay. to games, you know, for Windows 10 and the whole UWP platform. Okay. Uh, that was really fascinating to me. It wasn't, apparently, wasn't that fascinating to anybody else because oh, it's no. not a highly watched. <laughs> Are you uh, saying that you had to learn it in order to teach the class? That was uh, well. I was already doing w, uh, UWP. Okay. Uh, and you know the fact you can do game development, not game development, but you can write apps for the Xbox. Right. That's but, the new, It's universal. But it's not universal in a lot of ways too, because <laughs> it's you're working with a controller. Oh, and, yeah. you know, you know, so how, so if I'm moving the, the sticks on the controller, how do, what does that translate to? Now, the navigation on the Xbox itself is fine, but once you get inside your app, what does that mean when you do left control or right control or I up see. and down and things that you don't think about? So that was a learning curve for me. But my biggest course was um, on Visual Studio. Um, so we have these things called essential training courses. So we'll mm -hmm. have, like, um, let's say we'll have... Excel essential training and basically it, it's a these are the essential bits of this this tool or technology you need to learn mm. we try to cover like all the things you need and they came to me and we were talking about doing a essential training for Visual Studio and I said well Visual Studio is such a big tool right. there's no way I can fit it, all the essentials into a typical three like a three or four hour course you know even back then we were still doing bigger courses like eight hour courses even in eight hours, you can't cover it all. So I right. proposed a series, a series of courses. Mm -hmm. So you just start off with what is Visual Studio, and kind of give you a big overview, and then mm -hmm. each of my courses is on one area. So I have one on debugging, I have one on the code editors, I have one mm -hmm. on how Git, I'm sorry, source control works, and right. uh, and that way I can spend 90 minutes just on like IntelliSense right. and the tools in there. You know, and a lot of people that are watching this show probably are experts in. Visual Studio. I'm assuming you have a lot of .NET and Visual Studio. You'd be surprised who calls himself an expert these days. Yeah. Uh, so I just looked at it as like there's all these little pieces that that you kind of gloss over or, or sometimes don't even know you don't know. And so that was fun. And I ended up producing about I think it was 15 courses and about almost 40 hours of content. Impressive. Now, when you develop a course, are you are you building the content as well? Are you creating that, or is somebody else doing that? No, I do that. It? You do everything soup to nuts. Yeah. So, like, if you were a contractor doing a course for us, you would write the curriculum. I, I mean, you'd build the, you'd figure out what the, after we pick a topic, you'd figure out it's going to be a two-hour course and kind of what the topics you'd want to create. I mean, mm -hmm. talk about, uh, and can you fit those into the two-hour slot? And then it's your job to come up with the code demos and. The, and the slides, if you have slides. Right. What about the production aspect of it? If I, I think it was off camera you were telling me about there's a studio, or a bunch of studios, in these two buildings in California. Yeah, so we... So is there somebody there that's a producer and a director for your show? Right. Or, or are you going in and just reserving time doing all your stuff? Well, it depends on whether you're a contract author or a staff author. Like, I'm a staff author, so I'm assume, they assume that I can do it all myself. Ah. Um, you shouldn't have let them know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, things like I record at home in my home office, uh, but I st we still have our production department take care of everything else. The editing afterwards. The editing and, and art that. and all of that. Mm. Um, but, yeah, so what we have a, almost all of our – we have two main offices. We have one in uh, Carpinteria, which is near Santa Barbara, California, mm. and the other one is in Graz, Graz Austria. Mm. So most of our English language – Courses are recorded here in the U.S., hmm. and our foreign language uh, courses are recorded in, in Austria. Oh, how many languages are covered? We cover, uh, I want to say seven now, 
don't ask me to name them all because I won't remember. <laughs> we just added Chinese and Portuguese. Those are our two new languages we added. Wow. And so, in fact, I was at the MVP Summit earlier this year, and I was talking to the Portuguese MVPs because yeah. they were like, oh, you're going to be adding Portuguese. You probably need some new instructors. <laughs> so that worked out well. Nice. Uh, so uh, you're hiring instructors. People, I bet there's people that want to at least do some contract uh, yes. instructions so and we, something like LinkedIn Learning. Right. So we, I think we produce about 150 courses a, a month. So wow. we, uh, we have need for... Um, Let's say somebody's watching this. They say, I could do that. Yeah. I want to do that. So what, there's a... Um, you can go to, the, go to the LinkedIn Learning website and there's a contact us or a there's a link about I want to be an author or something like that oh, okay. so you can click on that or you can just uh, email me at uh, it's a W Richer at uh, LinkedIn or just w Walt R okay. at LinkedIn.com <clears throat> and I can get you in front of the right person are they, uh, are you do they come with an idea for a course or do they come and say I'm a really good instructor and do you have a list of backlog of courses that you that LinkedIn I'd say most of the people do. that come come to us already are experts in something and kind of know what they want to, I see. Want to do. <clears throat> um, now just because you want to do it doesn't mean we can we can contract you for it. Yeah, there may have been a course very similar. All right, yeah, similar already, market. somebody's already done it, or we maybe it just doesn't fit into our long range plans for the next 12 months. Hmm. You okay. know, we just don't see, like, we're doing a ton of Azure courses right now. Okay. Um, and obviously, web's uh, always a popular topic. And, but in the Microsoft space, Azure is big right now. Yeah. So we're looking for Azure instructors. But you know, we've already got a, a nice uh, set of instructors that have already done a bunch of courses for sure. us. And they've already picked out their courses for the next um, two or three quarters. OK. All right. So the established guys get a, their first pick, probably. Well, <laughs> that, unfortunately, that's kind of true in, in all of the training companies. That's true. Because yeah. no, you're a known entity. That makes sense. Uh, I wonder if they'd have an interest in my, my Fox Pro course. That I was <laughs> yes, we'd love to have that. Of course, we'll tell you, you're probably not going to make a lot of money. <laughs> when your royalties would be it. like $3 a year. I do it for the love year. of the game. Uh, <laughs> and what, so what about uh, the customer or potential customer? People want to learn. Uh, what's, what's the process? Is it, there's a fee for this, right? Yes. So you can either buy a subscription to lynda.com, although uh, we, uh, the company itself is pretty much focusing everybody on buying LinkedIn Learning okay. licenses. Is there a difference between a Lynda.com license and a LinkedIn Learning license? Well, you can see the same content. Okay. Right? So when I, like if, I, if one of my courses got published today, okay. we would push it to both sites. Okay. And we still have millions of Lynda.com customers who are still using the site. Hmm. Right? But we're, we think long term, long term, uh, LinkedIn's a better place for this, especially since we sell into so many enterprises now. Mm -hmm. okay. you know, so we can go to the Fortune 100 companies or Fortune 500 companies and sell a, a, you know, a bunch of licenses yeah, to that so company. Every, all your employees would have access to these training. Right, and one of the, the things that we do that's nice is, <clears throat> excuse me, is uh, so you buy a LinkedIn, so there's LinkedIn itself, which has a premium account or several okay. premium levels, and then there's LinkedIn Learning. Um, so you could, you could buy a LinkedIn Learning only license and just watch the training. I see. But we bundle it with most of the premium LinkedIn okay. accounts. So you get a LinkedIn premium account for work, which gets you all the LinkedIn benefits, and you also get LinkedIn Learning. Well, sounds really interesting. It is. And uh, you're, you're, you're teaching, and then you're also taking that stuff on the road to places like VS Live. Which yeah, is we're at VS right Live now. this week. I don't think you mentioned that yet. We're recording this at VS Live. Both David and I were speaking at the conference. It's a good conference. Done. We're the last two left here. Right <laughs> yeah, we were, I was <laughs> the last session of the last day today, so uh, people were, were full of knowledge. Yeah. So, yeah, and I, so I try to go out to conferences. You, so. What's up coming up for you? Right. What, what speaking is coming up for you? Speaking, I am going to be, I was here, and then uh, next week I'm at Ignite, but I'm not speaking there. All right, I'll see you there. Okay, and then the week after that I'm going to a uh, conference in the Poconos. Oh, Tech Bash. Tech Bash, thank you. Uh, and uh, that's my first time speaking there. Right. They, use the, they, they have a water park, you know? Yeah, are you, have you been there before? I was at the very first one. I won't be there this month. When was that? Uh, How many years ago was that? Two or three years ago. 
it was it was a nice conference. Is it it's a, grown since then. Is it big? Town. Is there a lot of people? There? And that year it was not big. I think it's grown since then. Yeah. Um, but people that run it are very nice. Yeah, I'm looking. I know some of the organizers. So I'm speaking there, and then I, um, and I'm speaking at VS Live Orlando, which is I think in November this year. Right. I don't have to look at my calendar. And what courses do you have coming up? I'm working. I have or a Visual recently. Studio Tips course that. Mm -hmm. um, I've been doing that for like a year now, so it's been a weekly tip series, so like once a week a new tip comes out. Oh really? So just like a five minute video? About yeah, five minute. Like and I pick some part of the ID that you might you know, not looked at, you know, Very cool. IntelliSense tip or you know, yeah. one of the plugins. Well, Control Q remains my favorite feature. What is that That's do? the one that uh, it lets you search among all the menus and the dialogues. If you want to know how to, uh, I don't know, turn on, uh, uh, navigate to the server explorer, the cloud explorer. Mm -hmm. so you, and you don't know where it is. It's somewhere under, you know, view, other windows, something like that. Just control Q. And it shows all the commands. And you can search available. for it. Yeah. 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 And I have, I'm going to be doing a VS Code uh, course, Q1 next year. I, that I think I'm going to, I'm not sure exactly everything I'm going to cover in that one, but Visual Studio Code is exciting. Yes. Um, so I'm going to do something in there. And then I'm going to do an Azure course, too. So I decided to do a yeah, Azure is so large. Yeah. Uh, and there's stuff for IT and uh, uh, database admins, and there's DevOps, and there's developer tools. So what, so what I decided to do, and we're still working on that. We just decided this last week, so I'm not sure I'm, I know everything I'm going to do in the course yet. But I, I thought it would be good to have an overview of uh, Azure for developers, mm -hmm. right? So. Uh, don't go deep on anything, but just kind of say, here's what Azure is overall, and here's the parts that are essential for developers. Mm -hmm. uh, and then just do a little bits on each one of those. Sure. You want to present some information, web apps. You want to save some data, here's databases and storage options. Right, and Azure Functions. Azure Functions and, are very cool. Yeah, and Logic Apps, and mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of pieces there, and, and of course, how far outside of dev do you go? Do, if you need a database, well then you can talk about SQL Server and spinning one of those up in virtual machines and mm -hmm. all of that. I don't know how far, like I said, I'm, we just <laughs> decided last series. week that I, I was gonna record this course. series of courses. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. I never thought when I started speaking uh, at conferences that how many friends I would make in the technology world. <laughs>